Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about a comedy romance film called Taking Care of Business from 1990. Enjoy your viewing. Jimmy can't imagine his life without baseball. Even while in prison, he does not miss a single game with his favorite team, the Chicago Cubs. Jimmy was imprisoned for multiple kidnappings. In prison, he became everyone's favorite, so the inmates threw a farewell party for him because Jimmy is about to be released. But the party was over before it started because it was a prison, not a country club. Jimmy hears on the radio that two tickets to the upcoming game between the Chicago Cubs and Los Angeles are being raffled off. All he has to do is answer a question, and Jimmy knows the answer. He calls the radio station and wins the tickets to the game. He can pick them up tomorrow at the Los Angeles airport, but there is a small problem. Jimmy is in jail. That morning, Spencer is going to work. He is a very hard worker, and he is addicted to his organizer, where all his cases and necessary contacts are written down. Spencer promises his wife Elizabeth that they will go on vacation on Sunday. Spencer's boss, Walter, is preparing for heart surgery and can't travel to business meetings. He gives Spencer an assignment to meet with Mr. Sakamoto in Los Angeles over the weekend and get a lucrative contract. If he succeeds, he will be promoted to first vice president. When Elizabeth finds out that Spencer has chosen work over her again, she packs up and moves out. Realizing that he can see his favorite team play with his own eyes, Jimmy goes to the warden to negotiate his release a day early. He is even willing to serve a few extra months in prison if Tolman lets him go to the game. However, the warden refuses. And when Jimmy takes his anger out on him, calling him all sorts of insulting names, Tolman deprives him and the rest of the prisoners of their TVs for the duration of the match. At first they want to kill the warden, but then they decide to go on strike. Jimmy likes this idea. He wants to take advantage of the strike to escape to watch the game and then return. His plan works. While the guards are busy with the prisoners, Jimmy grabs a bus and drives to freedom. At the same time, the entire prison staff thinks that Jimmy has been taken hostage and wants to hurt him because he caused the TV to be turned off. Spencer's assistant adds instructions for disabling the alarm at Walter's house and a key to the house to his organizer. Spencer will spend the weekend here on the plane. He meets his old friend Debbie. She is not indifferent to Spencer. She is very verbose and Spencer wants to get rid of her as soon as possible. Before leaving, Debbie gives him her phone number. The meeting with Debbie was only the beginning. At the airport, Spencer finds out that his luggage has been lost, and the driver who was supposed to pick him up has disappeared. He calls his assistant. In order to keep the organizer out of the way, he puts it on the phone stand, and then Spencer sees his driver and runs to him, forgetting about his organizer. Jimmy is at the same airport. He has pulled off his prisoner's clothes and has come to collect his tickets. When he sees the police, he hides near the phone where Spencer has just been. Jimmy sees Spencer's organizer. It said that the owner of the organizer would pay $1,000 to anyone who found him. Jimmy couldn't refuse the money, so he took the fine for himself. Realizing that he had lost the organizer, Spencer rushes back to the airport, but there is nothing there. Meanwhile, Jimmy goes to Walter's house, where Spencer was supposed to stay. Jimmy was supposed to give Spencer his organizer in exchange for $1,000. No one is home, but that doesn't stop Jimmy. After swimming in the sea, he finds a key and an alarm code in the organizer. Jimmy likes the luxury accommodation. He quickly settles in and even watches a report from the prison where he is allegedly being held hostage. At the same time, Spencer rents a car at the airport to get home, change clothes, and go to the meeting with Mr. Sakamoto. He drives into a disadvantaged neighborhood and is robbed. Spencer has no choice but to call Debbie and ask for her help. Jimmy's business partners pick him up to take him to Sakamoto's tennis match. They think that the criminal who escaped from prison is Spencer. Walter asks that Spencer lose to the Japanese in a game, but Jimmy doesn't know about it, so he easily defeats him and gloats about it. Debbie is sure that the call from Spencer is fate because their meeting was predestined by the stars. However, Spencer only needs to get to the tennis club where Sakamoto is now. The club has already seen one Spencer impersonated by Jimmy, so the real Spencer is kicked out, thinking he is a tramp but he manages to steal some decent clothes, return, and find out the address of Walter's house. Jimmy is visited by Walter's daughter, whose name is Jewel. Not knowing that someone is in the house, she changes her clothes by the pool and goes for a swim. Jimmy seizes the moment and approaches her. He uses phrases from the women's show he saw on TV in the morning to introduce himself to the beautiful woman. He and Jewel agree to meet at 8 Sowal. When Elizabeth calls, looking for Spencer, Jewel answers the phone, and Jimmy is having fun in the jacuzzi. In the evening, Jimmy's colleagues arrive to pick him up to take him to dinner with Mr. Sakamoto. When they leave, Spencer shows up and sneaks into the house. 
The alarm goes off and he is taken to the police station. He has to call Debbie again to pick him up and take him to the meeting with Sakamoto. But Debbie is tired of doing this and demands that Spencer have dinner with her first. Jimmy came to a business meeting. He had a heart-to-heart -heart with Sakamoto and angered Diane, whom he was supposed to be appeasing. Then he went on a date with Jewel. The girl liked him so much that she hinted that he would have a good surprise tonight. They go to Walter's house, and Jewel jumps on top of Jimmy. While the couple was lying in bed, Spencer called everyone he knew. Debbie made him dinner and waited for at least a small sign of attention from Spencer. Finally, Spencer called Walter's house and realized that the person who took his organizer was there. He asks Debbie to take him there, but she kicks Spencer out, offended, and forces him to walk to Malibu. As Jewel leaves, Jimmy invites her to go to the baseball finals with him. In the morning, an angry Spencer shows up and spoils his plans. His life is ruined, his career is ruined, and it's all the fault of this naughty man who found his organizer. Spencer grabs the baseball tickets and threatens to eat them if Jimmy doesn't tell everyone that he's the one who screwed up Spencer's deal. Jimmy has no choice but to go with Spencer to the office, where he tries to explain himself, but no one wants to listen. Diane refuses to cooperate with Spencer's agency, and Walter reprimands him for the failed deal. Jimmy defends him, but his opinion is of little interest here. Spencer can no longer live in such tension. He quits his job and tells Walter via video call. Jimmy follows him. Suddenly, Mr. Sakamoto appears. He hears Spencer talking to his bosses and reveals the real reason for his visit. He visited the United States to check out the complaints about Diane. Convinced that she is a poor specialist, Sakamoto fires her. To cheer Spencer up, Jimmy invites him to a baseball game. He calls Jewel and explains that he has to support his friend. The girl doesn't mind, but then Elizabeth shows up and tells him that she is Spencer's wife. The deceived women spend a long time trying to figure out how it happened that both of their Spencers are so different. Then they see Jimmy catching a ball on TV, hit by a Chicago Cubs player. Jewel and Elizabeth realize that they were talking about different men, and the real Spencer did not cheat on Elizabeth. They want to invite Jimmy to the commentary room and interview him because he caught the ball. But he runs away, noticing the guards. Spencer runs with him. They hear about the end of the match on the radio, and then Jimmy realizes that it's time for him to go back to prison. But doing so will be more difficult than escaping. Elizabeth calls Walter's car, and Spencer apologizes to her and invites her to go to Hawaii. Jewel is convinced that he and Jimmy are serious. Then Spencer comes up with a plan to get his friend back to prison. He apologizes to Debbie for his behavior and asks her to make Jimmy look like a woman. The two of them arrive at the prison, where journalists have already gathered and authorities have arrived. Spencer introduces himself as a priest and asks Tolman to allow Jimmy's mother to visit her son. The striking prisoners did not want to let the old woman in until they realized that it was their friend, Jimmy. Once inside, he changed into a prison uniform and came out to the journalists with words of gratitude. Tolman found out about his stunt, but did not say anything to the press. Moreover, he promised that Jimmy would be released today. After leaving the prison, Jimmy leaves with Spencer. But before he does, he says goodbye to Tolman by throwing a baseball through his office window. Spencer receives a call from Mr. Sakamoto, who invites him and Jimmy to work for him. He offers a very good salary, but Spencer asks for time to think about it. He is no longer obsessed with work. When he and Jimmy are driving away from the prison fence, the organizer left on the roof of the car falls to the ground and remains lying on the road. If you have watched the video so far, you should know that I am happy to have viewers like you. Thank you for watching to the end. Subscribe to the channel and follow the news. Klonsak Recapped was with you. See you soon.